Well, just when we think we're going to have a slow news day, we get the news that Mike Tomlin's contract has been extended for throughout for the, well, I guess three years to the 2027 season. Oh boy. Almost so many people had the same reaction. Like I'm sure everybody will, will, uh, will respond to this, uh, uh, calmly and quietly and there'll be no discussion. <laughs> oh I, boy. Last what do you I think? checked on your little poll, uh, Steeler fans were in favor of it. I guess that must be the idiots are just online. The, the real <laughs> will get on later. I mean, <laughs> it's tough. I mean, it's, I don't dislike him as a person. He's a very good guy. It seems like, um, I get that he's a player's coach, but if anything, his playoff record has been uglier. Well, I mean, how do you give an extension to a guy who hasn't won a playoff game in seven years? A guy that claims to be defensive minded, who got who's been obliterated in the playoffs over the last couple of times, lost to Blake Bortles, lost to Tim Tebow. I mean, just don't see it. And here's the one that I, I can't stand. I was watching a um a show uh some of my friends do uh at around five o'clock. There was kind of breaking news then. And you know, big Steeler Tom fan. Well, who else are you gonna get? Man, if there's one opinion I can reach across the table and slap you, who else? How about any damn literally buddy? anybody else? People. Anybody? I, because I mean, you know, I know it's I don't know if it's hypocritical or not, but hey, look. At one point, when Bill Cowher was gone, we were all crapping in our pants like, "Who are you going to get?" Uh, right. Oh, Mike Tomlin. Who the hell is Mike Tomlin? You know what? Pretty young, <laughs> right. good, good coach. Well, he coached at William and Mary, or he played there. Oh my God, he turned out to be not too bad. Bill Cower, same thing. Who? Cower? Chuck Noll, Chuck Noll, Chuck Noll. Cower didn't end up being too bad. You know, so, and but even Cower kind of jumped the shark, and Tomlin has jumped the shark. Yes. He's, he's Fonzie um, with no hair now. <laughs> um, he just needs a leather jacket and a, and a, and a motorcycle. And, I mean, it's just, uh, I, and I guess the Penguins have the same disease, Joe. I, I don't do. know. They do. It's 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 the exact same. It's almost the exact same situation. Coach has been there forever. Hasn't really done anything. Um, hasn't done anything in the, in the postseason. But let's keep him around because vibes. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I mean, like I know he's so Tomlin. I think is right now twenty games behind Chuck Knoll. Um, <laughs> when that happens, when Tomlin passes Chuck Knoll, people are going to lose their freaking minds probably i'm just of the oak that go ahead and pass chuck no you're never gonna be as good as him you're never gonna be good as him I, as him i i mean yes you're not oh you had more regular season wins big deal he orchestrated the 70s steelers with a big help from from billy dunn uh bill nunn i mean um yeah you're no you're no chuck no, and it isn't because you're black and he was white or any of that other stuff. Give me a break. It's just sorry. Chuck Knoll knew when to get out. Uh, we, I think you and I both referenced one of the greatest books ever done by him, and, and the, the book on Chuck Knoll. I believe it was, uh, I believe it was David Marinus. I could have that wrong. Sorry if I do. Um, and you know, Chuck Knoll went home and told his wife. It had to been like after the '84 season. And or something like that, or maybe 1980 after the 79 team had kind of been done, or 81. He says, You know how I told you back in like the early 70s, be ready because these guys are going to be good. And he told her, Now we're going to have some downtime. <laughs> he knew. I, I don't know. Um, well, what does this say for the big picture? I mean, here's here's Tomlin, he had an, an amazing roster coming in. Coming in, he had a Hall of Fame quarterback and an amazing defense. And he was able to take that to winning a Super Bowl in um, in 2009, going to another Super Bowl in 2012. Okay, that's great. Uh, then that defense kind of went away, and you had a great offense with, with uh, Ben and A.B. and Le'Veon Bell. Okay, great. They didn't do they didn't do diddly squat in the playoffs, pretty much. 
But then after that, you've had the Ben's end of career. Now Ben is gone. And now we've had to deal with the aftermath of not having a Hall of Fame quarterback. And I'm sorry, but it's been it's been okay. It is commendable that you take a not a great roster and and made them over 500. That's a nice accomplishment, but that really doesn't do a damn thing. We don't measure things by over 500 seasons, and neither does he, and neither does does, does uh, Mr. Rooney. But come on, what are we doing here? How long are we going to continue with this? mediocrity let's just call it what it is yep. mediocre we are mediocre we are a little bit better than average and we've been that for years now now i'm getting fired up i was yeah. i actually like him i actually defend tomlin but now i'm getting pissed you've convinced me con- con- congratulations yeah thank you I, I do my best um you know <laughs> okay he has a super bowl win he did it with most of Cowers players, but I still give him credit. You got to get the win. So that's kind of like a push for me. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily fair to him to say we well, did it with Cowers players because you still got to get there. It's not like he just sat on the bench and they did everything and said, hey, you just rest out there. We got this. So he had something to do with that. You got to give him credit. But if you pan out in league history, if I did my mouth right, out of at least coaches with 10 playoff points, did I write that right? Playoff appearances. Only six coaches have worse records than he do he does in the playoffs. Uh, Steve Owen, who nobody really knows, Marty Schottenheimer, famous for not winning anything. Uh, Paul Brown, Denny Green, famous for the '98 choke job. Chuck Knox and John Robinson. Now you take Schottenheimer, Brown, Knox, and Robinson. Those are guys that were beloved by their cities. You know, you could have figured out Chuck Knox was not going to leave Seattle until he died. John Robinson with the Rams, same way. Um, Chuck Knox, the ground Chuck re- de- uh, offense. Um, and it's like Mike Tom's the same thing. Well, we're just going to keep him around and keep him around like they did with John Robinson and Chuck Knox and Marty Schottenheimer and Denny Green. But they just couldn't do it. I mean, Denny Green, I always, I always am pissed about Denny Green because I think he took away what could have been the greatest Super Bowl ever. 98, it would have been John Elway and that great Broncos team versus that Minnesota Vikings team that was absolutely insanely good. Uh, fifteen and one on the re- year, and Gary Anderson. Falcons. Gary and Anderson missed. misses a field goal. He didn't yeah. miss one all year, and he yeah. missed a crucial field goal. And Minnesota doesn't go to the Super Bowl because that's Denny amazing. Green played it safe, and he, I mean, yep. with that offense. So it's and to me, if you say those names, Mike Tomlin, other than the Super Bowl win, that's the only thing that separates him. He fits right in there. I could see that. Yep, ten playoff appearances, losing record. Yeah. Yeah, if it wasn't for, I mean, and that's the thing. And, and, and the, uh, the, the thing is, he's the only one of those guys that went on a seven-year stint with no playoff victories. All those other guys had at least one in like a three- or four-year cadence or whatever it may be. So, I mean, it's, you know, and I get it. I get it. As soon as he goes somewhere else, they're going to win. And that's probably right. God bless him. Go, yeah. go, go, go to somewhere else. God, we, you have our blessing. That's fine. Well, but, but I mean, if if you take the Penguins, Joe, and you look at that, it's like, okay, we needed Dan Biles money. We needed Disco to come in when he did. Spark. They go and win. Then it got flat for a little while. They probably should have gone to Stanley Cup final at least once or twice more with, and he was very complacent. Okay, we need to bring in Sully. Sully comes in. He's the right fit. Spark plug. Boom. We go to back to back cups. Uh, and then we just get complacent again. You know, and it's like, I mean, I know we're very proud of Chuck Knoll, Bill Cowher, and Mike Tallman. And we've only had three coaches since like 19, whatever. Um, okay, great. But it's time to go to a fourth. Just is. Uh, and even if we go to a fourth, Joe, we're still better than everybody. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if we've if we've had Four coaches in 55 years or something like that. That's still really good, folks. Don't pretty good. Worry. Yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just I'm trying to look at this in the big picture. And, and we have to pretend that Tomlin does not have anything to do with evaluating and picking the players. And we know damn well. I know, you know, because people blame um, Kevin Colbert. 
for oh he, he had some really, really crappy drafts. He didn't do so well in his later years. Okay, but don't tell me, don't tell me Tomlin had nothing to do with p- picking Kenny Pickett or you know or, or 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 some of these players. Don't don't tell me that he he is you know he is able to overcome problems, but he is overcoming problems that he created or that he helped create. This 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 whole thing with Kenny Pickett was a disaster. And now we're trying to see. Now we have a, either a temporary um thing in Russell Wilson or possibly the, the you know a permanent thing with Justin Fields, but also possibly a, a temporary thing too. We're we're at we're at a disaster and we're saying, oh, they did they did these good moves and these all these good moves were good. You know, all these people, they'll be go- they could be gone next year. Then what? Then we're bad, basically back to square one. Yeah, and, and I still argue on the side. I, I feel like he he said, well, Ben didn't play well in the playoffs. Well, you, that's because you brought shitty offensive game plans just about every time. You know, you're so worried about the defense, which you couldn't execute. Um, you can say what you want about Kenny Pickett, but the Steelers are in a strange QB situation, largely because Tomlin can't manage it. You know, I mean, you you pick you pick Kenny Pickett number one. Uh, things are going well with the OC. You just keep bringing back that o- OC, a subpar OC at best. You keep bringing him who back. Who picked now, that OC? Who had right. who had, a, who had a, a thing? I'm sure he had. I'm sure he either picked him or had a, a large part in picking Matt Canada. Right. And and if there's if there's still one thing I'll go back to and dine on a hill for Kenny Pickett, although I'm I'm okay with him being gone. It was. By the time he went in his first year, he had never played with the first team offense. How in the hell do you not take your number one pick and you have knew him he play? was the guy? Yeah, you knew he was going to be the guy. You, you know, best case scenario, Mitch Trubisky plays like eight games or something like that and then passes it off to Kenny. If that's the case, you're going to have one quarterback play half a year and the other quarterback play a half a year. Here's a crazy idea. Have that that rookie quarterback play a little bit with the first team, not not in week four of the, the regular season. Right. And to me, the only way that Mike Tomlin can prove me wrong or resurrect this or whatever, he's got to go win some playoff games and get to a Super Bowl and either win it or at least get there. Because uh, to me right now, he's trending, you know, Tony Dungy. Right, Tony Dungy, very similar. Hey, he only won one Super Bowl with Peyton Manning, couldn't beat the Patriots. Uh, with Peyton Manning and Ar- Marvin Harrison and, and Reggie Wayne and, and, and Edgar and James, they should have won more Super Bowls. That's probably true. Um, and, and you can make the same argument at one point. For at least two years, we had Ben, A.B., and Le'Veon Bell at their finest with a pretty and decent didn't offensive do, didn't line. Do squat with them. Couldn't do squat with them. You know, so it's yeah, like uh, – you know when when Ben when Ben A B and Le'Veon were in at, at their peak, um, it was maybe the best offense in the league, and you had that defense. As I'll never forget you. You mentioned Blake Bortles. I'll never forget that year because oh. Ryan Shazier went down, yep. and then the entire defense crumbled. Here's a crazy idea. Maybe I know we're in the Keystone State. Don't don't lose that one Keystone, and the entire team crumbles apart. Have some kind of different scheme. Have some kind of backup player. Have some kind of thing where you're. I mean, this, this, I think that game was like forty-five to forty-two. Like, like the, the, the Jaguars came out to and an amazing. Like, like, like they were blowing them out. And the Steelers' In offense. I remember, like, like Ben and A. B. and Le'Veon were like superhuman. They were doing. They were trying to put the entire team on their back, but because the defense was so horrible, because Blake Bortles kicked their butts, that they, they they lost that game. That was ridiculous in Pittsburgh in um, Pittsburgh. And, you know, and that's the thing, like I, it's weird because I do say I have some hopes for this year. I, I love the signings we made on defense. I'm fairly confident our defense is going to be pretty strong. I, my only concerns, and we've talked about this defensive line depth has me worried a little bit. And that other cornerback position could be ups and down. Now the Steelers do have a decent amount of money left to spend. So, you know, uh, one of the reasons we do try to do this or bring the show to you every week is because of uh, Omar Khan's gone bat nuts crazy. And we don't know next week we may have who knows, uh, <laughs> who knows could be here, who knows who could be yeah. gone. Um, right. so I would say, and that's why I just did, I was kind of blown away, Joe, 
on on the extension news we got this afternoon because I thought this is Tomlin's year, his year to prove for the extension next year. He goes, he gets him to the AFC Championship game. Okay, I guess I'd be okay with an extension. Show me you can go to the playoffs, win a few games, lose in desperation or lose a close game, whatever. Maybe even go to the Super Bowl and lose. At least we know you've gotten to the point where you can beat the Chiefs, you can beat the Bills. You are at, now the Steelers are contender again. <sighs> It, it sounds like if you were the owner of the Steelers, that's the talk you would have with Tomlin. It's like, listen, guys, hey, buddy, enough is enough. This year, make or break. If you make it, great. Then we'll keep you on. But if you suck and don't even win another playoff game and either get nine and eight or barely get into the playoffs yet again, with not, yet again, another loss, then we can't do this every single year, man. But no, no, we're kicking the can and we're going to, who knows what? Who knows? Who knows when? Th- that's what I want to know: is when does this end? When does when does this end? What, if, if God forbid we have another season like that, where it's you know you barely get in and you and you don't win any playoff games, at some point, it's it, it has to be over. We cannot continue this forever, right? Even if you look at like if you want to bring baseball into the mix, or, or even the NBA, or even hockey, well, with the exception of Sullivan. Sure. Most teams will try to switch up the lineup. They'll switch yeah. up the po- the pitching rotation, the batting lineup, who sits on the bench, who comes in as a sixth man, uh, who rotates maybe in forward, who let's switch the lineups in hockey. There's all these different things they try to do, and, and we just keep on, like, banging our head on the wall, and, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's why I, I thought one of the glaring signs of Tomlin is just kind of lost was bringing Matt Canada back. Um, he never should have come back last year. Never, not in a million years should that it clown literally ruin the team and it ruined the season. That yeah. one decision keeping him ruined everything. Yeah, broke it broke this team. Yep. So I mean, things are lined up again for them to hopefully have a bounce back year. But like we talked about in a couple podcasts ago, the thing that in a way is working against Mike Tallman. That schedule is brutal. I don't care if you dug up Vince Lombardi and brought him back. I mean, he would have he would have said, first of all, what the hell's going on with this schedule? You know? <laughs> I mean, what are we doing playing on Christmas Day? Uh, I mean, and I mean, uh, that Steelers that that three days with what is it? The Bengals, Ravens, Chiefs in ele- in, in eleven days. Uh, are you out of your mind? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's I don't care like Mike Tomlin, Bill Cowher, Chuck Noll, whoever. I, I mean, that's. Brutal. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I can't I can't fault Tomlin if they lose all three yeah. or, or one, two. I mean, at that point, it's so late in the season anyway, they could be banged up. I, it, it's it's frustrating. <clears throat> really is. I don't know. I don't I, I don't know. I don't I, I just I just want. I just want a plan. I just want because everything we've heard, like it was almost a the theme of this year. And it was actually something you mentioned from last year is enough is enough. No excuses. This year, it seems like Mr. Rooney is saying, okay, I'm tired. I'm tired of the losing. I'm tired of the same crap. Something got to change. Well, okay. You changed a bunch of players, but you didn't do any. Okay. You finally got rid of the the, the most horrible offensive coordinator ever, but (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And I love yep. Tomlin. I I want him to succeed. I want I he is I, he is a great leader of men. He's a great administrator. But the results gotta be there. And and hey, folks, I'm 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 a little tired of. Well, if you don't like Tomlin, you must be racist. Oh, shut up! No, Me maybe too. you're just a football fan. Maybe you're just a football fan that is tired of losing. Literally, literally, the, the 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 um the the motto is the standard is the standard. Well, what the hell is the standard now? Crap, mediocrity, because that's been the standard for at least the last seven years. Yeah, totally. I totally agree. Um, it, it, that just pisses me off. Don't don't accuse me of a, of being a racist. I, you know, me and my bobblehead craziness. I I have one that faces me every day. It's Jackie Robinson's right here. I'm not a racist, folks. I put that right at the front of my desk, not back here, because it always reminds me of what they went through and how I should be a little bit nicer and understanding. So don't give me don't give me the, the race card. Um, F you. <laughs> if you're gonna give me a race card. <laughs> exactly. I, it's 
it's just, and I always say, make comparisons and fine. Go, go back to Chuck Knoll. If they hire Chuck Knoll, he comes in and they win, but they don't win any Super Bowls with that 70s team or they only win one. Is he nearly successful? No. And sadly, that's what it comes down to. How many championships? Championships are what matters, folks. I mean, it, it is. And, and is Mike Tallman going to the Pro Football Fame? Yeah. Does he deserve to go? Yeah. It's just. <laughs> Uh, so then you say, well, Darren, how, 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 or Joe, how can you say you got to send away a Hall, Hall of Fame coach? Well, that all of them still kind of run out of gas. Vince Lombardi exactly. went to the Redskins. I mean, you know, they all start. Belichick, you, just, you know, Belichick was gone. Eventually, you know, eventually it just, it just ends. You have Andy Reid. Andy Reid is a great coach. He was a great coach in Philadelphia, but it was never going to work. He had to go. At some point, yeah. you realize you can't keep doing the same thing. You yep. have to change things up, and I, I, I don't know. Agreed. I just, I just don't like, know how long this yeah. is going to continue. I mean, you could look at, at Don Shula and say, well, I mean, he had the most wins there for a while, uh, but a lot of us, maybe not you and I, but some of these fans have no clue how good they were in the seventies, and uh, you know, they they undefeated and and all that, and. Uh, you can say what you want, but he, he had a couple of Super Bowl wins, and should he done more with Danny Marino? Yeah. Um, so there's there's always that kind of stuff, but it just that's for me what it is. I appreciate what Tomlin's done. I've liked what he's done. I've liked these here, and I'm glad that we had him for when we had him. But I just feel like it's time. It's time to move on. It's time to switch on. Hell, Vince McMahon even knew when. Hey, okay, Hulk Hogan and Andre Giants kind of jumped the shark. Let's switch to Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage. Let's switch to Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior. Hitman Hart is ready. Let's bring him up. You know, he knew yeah. when to do these things uh, with wrestling because you get bored with it. It's, TV shows are the same way. Where do you get jumped the shark from? We Happy Days is like one of the greatest sitcoms in history, but it just went too damn long. That's why they call it Jump the Shark. You have Fonzie out there in his leather jacket jumping a shark. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> so I just feel like he Tom did it in his leather jacket. He's out there water skiing. Life jacket. In a leather jacket. What are yep. we doing, people? <laughs> in a bathing suit? His leather jacket. In a, with a, a bathing yeah. suit and a leather jacket, and he jumped over a shark. That's shark. That's amazing. Right. That's right. Have you ever seen a Richard Jenny thing on Jaws 4? No, no. Oh, let me tell you, everybody listening, and for Richard Jenny, God rest his soul, um, he did one of the funniest bits you ever see. You just Google Richard Jenny and Jaws 4, and you will thank me because, I mean, he talks about how bad that was. They're just trying to stretch out Jaws for as much money as they could to get as much money as they could. And, yeah, um, <laughs> it is what it is. And, and Tom, we may come back here at this time next year and say, boy, we were wrong. And I'll hope, I hope that we can say that. I'll say I'm wrong when I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, but, man, it's been – this last seven years has been a pretty mediocre ride, Joe. You said it best. Whether you like him or you hate him, it doesn't matter. All that matters is this is a results-based business. This is why I love sports. Sport, sports is a meritocracy. If you play well, if you win, then that's great. If you lose, then bad stuff happens. And that bad stuff is you get fired. Right. This, isn't, this can't last forever. It's a results-based yeah. business. And I don't, I'm just hoping, and I have this feeling that let's say everything falls apart this year. Let's say they go seven and 10 or something like that. Don't even make the playoffs. I don't care that he signed you 2027. I think, I think he would be on the hot seat. I think, I think Mr. Rooney would say that's enough. We're, I don't, I don't care. We're done. We're done here because I'm not saying he would be fired, but I'm saying maybe yeah. if this year was bad, then for sure next next year is make or break it, buddy. Make this is it. This is yeah. it. I'm I'm tired. This is it. So we'll see. And I think you and, and all the guests you you bring on the show, and I'm very thankful you always do for me. Thank you for doing that. But we've all said last year we never heard Heinz Field or Three Rivers for that matter get nuts and as opinionated as it had fire. You know. Uh, Kenny sucks. Bring in Kenny. We love Kenny. We hate Kenny. Fire Canada. Um, you know, Tomlin having to address it after the games a couple times. We have very passionate fans. No, you have very pissed off fans. Let me yeah. tell you, if you go the route Joe said, and you're sitting there and you're like two and seven or three and six, 
before that big time. I mean, you're going to hear the fire Tomlin chant. Right. I in the easy part of the schedule. I guarantee you will hear fire Tomlin chant. Because oh, yeah. Steeler yeah. fans are fed up. Yeah. Um, they just are. You know, yeah. and it's, that's the it, way. it could get ugly. It could, it could it get very ugly. well could get ugly. Yeah. Um, another thing that happened last week is that they signed Cam Sutton. And I, I, I think this should get a lot more debate than it has um, because of what he did. And what he did yeah. was allegedly um, have domestic abuse against his I don't even know if it's wife, girlfriend, partner, whatever. Um, but the, the details are pretty nasty. And then he evaded the cops for like two weeks. And yet the Steelers are bringing him in. And I, it seems like most people do not have a problem with this. And I think maybe they should. Uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I, I kind of have a problem with it. I had a problem when James Harrison was, you know, kind of up for for the things he'd been up for. And um, for whatever reason, you know, it looks like he went and got help. And I think, I mean, we don't know what goes on in people's homes. You never do. But it uh, seems like he, whatever he did, resurrected that, I guess, um, and fixed that. But, uh, yeah, there's there's a price to be said for something like that. You know, there is. I mean, I, I, I can tell you I went through it with Penn State. Um cried was so torn over that uh i can go in a whole litany of things there but um you know that was just a dark moment whether you say uh, joe knew joe didn't know this that and the other thing it, it still happened to an extent um and you know it just a, it, it just that stuff that means you have character uh and i feel like the steelers have always had that um but you know, who knows? Bringing him back is questionable. It, it really, really is. So apparently, um, so apparently it was taken from whatever the charges were. Some of them were lessened or something like that. And if he goes through some kind of, I don't know, classes or training or something like that, he could get them reduced or something like that. And okay, fine. I hope. I mean, he, from what everybody says, he's a great dude. Maybe he just had one horrible incident. Hopefully he, re, he rehabilitates. Whatever. Okay. But, okay, and you say, okay, now we have our slot corner. No, you don't, because he's going to get suspended for like half the year. So yep. what are we doing? What are we doing if you're taking this risk on a dude that's not even going to be here half the time? Right, although we might need him by that second half of the year. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think everything you said there is correct, too. And, yeah, I mean, you go back to Ray Rice and all that crap there and, and, and some of the stuff that you've seen, and it's just usually not the Steeler way. Um, I don't even know if there is a Steeler way anymore, but um, that's just definitely not one of them. I, I don't think you'd see uh, – and that question, too, you know, I don't know if Mike Tomlin said, bring him back. Maybe I can get to him because he does seem to do well with players. Uh, maybe, you know, I, I don't know. I, part of me could also see Mike Tomlin saying, I don't agree with this, but they forced it on Mike Tomlin anyway. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I have a feeling the, the, the team and the league, whenever things like this happen, they conduct their own investigations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Whatever happened, I'm sure the Steelers have all the details on it because they would not take this chance if it was that bad or if, you know, if he still was in a bad in a bad place or something like that. So uh, but either way, the league is still going to suspend him and it's probably going to be for at least six games. So. Yeah. Great, great. I mean, yeah, they need a nickel corner, but. Okay. I mean it's just it's it's just the, the debate we have. I remember when uh when when they when the Steelers signed Michael Vick, I remember uh, people were protesting. Yep. And 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 rightfully so. What Mike Michael Vick did was was horrific, but he also repented, he also rehabilitated himself, 
you know, he, he became a good citizen. He, he, you know, so he, he, he turned himself around. So you say, okay, that's good. You have, you, you have forgiveness, rehabilitation. Great. But that's still, that's still a touchy subject. Yeah. It, I had a friend, she lives down in Charlotte and she's a master's dealer fan to this day. She's casual dealer fan. Cause she never agreed with that. Although you're right. Mike, uh, Vic tried to do his way. Sometimes when people do the things they do, Joe, they're never forgiven. And I, which, you know, we can get that in a whole other podcast, but uh, hey, I you know I think he finished well and he 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 did well here. So uh, times that they called upon him, who knows? But yeah, um, I, I mean the Steelers definitely are aware of the legality. They know what to expect. They didn't go into this stupidly. Um, they must expect, and I, I feel like maybe partly in what I said, they must think you know what by injuries we may need him, yeah. and so maybe that's it. I don't maybe that's the only reason because. You're right. Um, going into that, they knew they knew they were not going to have him for a while. So I, I know there's somebody else I'm trying to think of the Steelers brought in like that where they knew he was going to miss a few games. Who knows? Um, but it, it is what it is. And uh, I still a little worried about that cornerback position. Uh, who knows what they can do? The other Sutton, Cortland Sutton, he's showing up tomorrow. He says he's showing up to Denver's mini camp. It's mandatory. Um some are saying, well, if he doesn't cost him hundred thousand dollars, yeah, well, he's gonna make like six million this summer. It doesn't he doesn't care. <laughs> right. That's he doesn't yeah. really care. But if you go start showing up to mini camp, I think you could probably shut the door and bring in the other Sutton here. Um, he was a wide receiver. I would have hoped we would have got. I think at 28, still got a few years left in him. But um, who knows? And that's the thing. I think now we're kind of biding our time. Who else could they sign or who else could they pick in the next coming weeks or month that could make a splash? Um, because I kind of feel that they still they still need to do that for me to put them over the top. Yeah. You know, and I always wonder. I, I I have to think this is the case that Omar Khan thought he had a deal in place to get somebody, and the Probably. deal fell through. And yep. you know, because of, this is just kind of a crappy situation to be in. It's just yep. you know, because what they have right now at, at wide receiver two just. Ugh. So, yeah, we'll, well you know, the, the other thing that struck me, I don't saw you saw this in the news today, you know, with Deontay Johnson, um, which it's funny how we remember what we do and it's what we say, because like, if you remember, I was all for them and predicted he'd be gone. You and Allison at the time were like, yeah, but the void, it'll leave. And I thought, well, they could kind of fill that void fairly quickly. Well, they haven't. You guys <laughs> tended to be, I think we were all right on that one. To yeah. a point. But today, um, Keenan Allen went absolutely nuts on Caleb Williams because like he missed him like five straight times and so they had to be I think separated at practice today at Bears camp and wow. it's like we all and we've all said why are you picking Caleb Williams none of us think he's number one material and here he's like he's been awful in camp by all accounts and Keenan Allen has had it uh <laughs> I, I mean guys we're in OTAs we're not even we're not even really starting this uh, if right off now wait till wait till this training camp wait till, wait till, camp. Wait till games <laughs> You're, he's gonna he's gonna think he's gonna, they better like have a metal detectors on this dude or something <laughs> my goodness so i i don't know i think maybe the steelers thought that could be a deontay johnson kind of a thing this this coming summer and in fall so i don't know but yeah um who knows maybe you can figure out a way to swing keenan allen in here <laughs> there you go there you go um, I don't know. One thing that blows me that. away about the Cam Sutton thing is he was last in 2000 before the 2023 season, he signed with the Detroit Lions. Yep. And he he was he was horrible with them. But they, I think you know the role they had him in was just a, a bad role. But so he was with the Steelers last in 2022. The the only person that even knows about Cameron Sutton from the, from this current team is Minka Fitzpatrick. The entire, almost the entire defense, I mean, the entire secondary has been completely changed in two years' time. Yep. We have a, a new secondary. It's crazy. Well, it's it's crazy because I don't think either one of us or probably a lot of Steeler fans, for that matter, can figure out you know what they're doing here. I mean, other than saying, well, we had this guy for six years, so we get him on the cheap, you know, and he's a starting corner. Well, we'll just deal with his crap. I mean okay and maybe it's a depth thing i don't know but it's it's a bad look uh it's a bad look for the steelers to bring a guy like that on the team um i have a nine-year-old son uh he's not the kind of guy 
that I would want to take take the game and you know tell my son, hey, yeah, let's root for that guy. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, he beat the living crap out of his wife. Uh, yeah, let's look up to him. I mean, sorry yeah. if I'm being old fashioned, but I'm not going to encourage my nine year old son to like cheer on a guy like that. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, it's it it kind of all stinks to high hell, doesn't it? Just doesn't doesn't feel right, doesn't smell right. Not a good not a good decision by the Steelers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least um, the at least the Tom at least the Tomlin extension you can justify it in some instances. Yeah. You know, I I can see some I can hear you out on a few things. This this I can't uh Yeah. I mean, because also Joe, you think about that, that's a lot of adversity as a person, right? I mean, here's this guy, he's coming to camp, he doesn't know what's gonna happen. He probably has to meet with his lawyers multiple times a week. Get told this, that he doesn't know where he's got to be. Do they have to fly him back to Hillsborough? Does he have to go there for trial? I, I assume that he does. Um, so in that instance, you know, I don't see any coaching staff that's going to say, "Oh yeah, well, we're going to." Don't you worry. You go get take care of your losing thing. Yeah, fly down. Take Monday. the day off. That's cool. Yeah, come back. We'll get you in there. No, it's it's not. It's not a good marriage either way. Yeah, not a good marriage either way. And I mean, the guy went to Detroit. He had a thirty-three million dollar deal and blew that. Um, with all the crap. So, I mean, the Lions at the time yeah. could have used them. What does that say about the Lions that immediately they're like, get out of here? Get, well, I don't care. I don't care if it's a salary cap hit. I don't care what we still owe you, whatever. Just just get out of my face. Right. And and you got to, I would say, if you're looking at the, the, the best six teams in the NFL, you got to make a statement that the Lions are probably one of the best six teams in the NFL. Can't believe we're saying that, but that's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. They're they're a very good team. Yep. yep. So we will we'll we'll see. Um yep. Cam Hayward came back to minicamp even though he said he uh he was gonna stay away. Um I mean it just makes too much sense that they're gonna make a deal. They just like like, like whenever it happens, it's going to happen either during training camp or right before the season, but they're gonna extend them. It's like like what are we doing here? Right. You know, um, he had to do what he had to do. I think you want to get his opinion and his thought out there. <sighs> that one's a tough one because here's a guy I love and he embodies everything that Cam Sutton doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Yet. Uh, I think Cam Sutton's 28 or 29. Um, so regardless of all of that, if he can come back and play, he, he still has the ability to probably make a big impact. You and I both know, it's a long season. It's now especially a long season. Can Cam Kayward's body keep up? I mean, it hasn't done well the last couple of years. And the Steelers didn't do a lot of depth additions to help him to get him off the field. So, you know, I I, I don't know. I, I have no problem with them paying him the money if they do. He deserves it. Uh, he's earned it. He's the NFL man of the year. What can you say yeah. about it? Yeah. You just, know, but let's get it done. Just, just yeah. don't, don't. Don't don't drag this out. Just just, just I get will it done. say over the years, and I and I don't know how, if there is a steal away, the Steelers have had an uncanny ability to know when not to pay somebody and when they are done. For the most part. They've been wrong a few times, but for the most part, they've been really good. About and, that. and sometimes they kind of force them to 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 not not get paid. Like, you know, Troy. Palomalo didn't exactly end well. Heinz Ward no. didn't exactly end well. Kind of Ben almost didn't end well. Uh, you know, they just gave him a huge pay cut at the end of at, at the end of his career, and, and for some reason, he you know, for to his credit, he he, he took it only twenty million dollars. I don't I don't know how the guy right. is gonna. I don't know how the right. guy can go to Giant Eagle, you know, only making twenty million <laughs> a year. But uh, you know, so you know, here and here, Cam. Here, I mean, his the last year of his contract. It's, it's a huge amount for this year, and they're they're they they say, hey, we'll we'll pay it. Yeah, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna cut your salary or anything like that. Oh, Jerome Bettis, that was another one. Jerome, Jerome Bettis, they they like they gave they, they paid him like minimum wage toward the end of his career. <laughs> right. You know, and and but but you know, Cam, there, you know, was they 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 let him take that that huge amount, and we'll see, we'll see. I mean, because I think if they do work on a deal, they could make it so that they get like a lot more money this year in, in free cap space. So that's another reason it's like, you know, make the deal. And I think maybe 
Maybe if you're, I don't know, trading for um, a certain other wide receiver somewhere, maybe you're going right. to need that money. So we'll yeah, see. you want to bring in a Brandon Ayuk or somebody mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. You know, and that's part of it. It's a monopoly too. It's a monopoly game. Um, so they're trying to figure out all that stuff. And um, you know, and yeah, I mean, Heinz Ward uh, and you talk about Ben and I always have said this at the end of that game, when they, when it's his last game, and he sat there and he had that somber look on his face, kind of crying a little bit. I've always wondered, was it the, this is it? Or how much better could it have been? I always feel it's a mix of that. Like, man, these last couple of years, we could have been so much better than we were. I mean, he had to put you know, it with my I don't Canada. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think what, I think what he did was quote unquote, put up with Matt Canada, but also, did his own damn thing because I've heard I've heard an interview with Josh Dobbs and it's like yeah the the offense the offense was basically whatever the hell, hell Ben wanted to do so, <laughs> but there was that right. but there was also that um you know the the Kendrick Green um no. experience and the you know Dan Moore in the beginning of his career kind of sucked and you know it's like if you had an okay offensive line. He wouldn't. He, he it, w- it would have been a lot better for him in his final years. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that, all that. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just you, there's just things I feel like. Sometimes I have resentment against Tomlin, and I'm sure Colts fans feel the same way about Tony Dungy because I feel there was at least one or two more Super Bowls in there. Same with the Penguins. I feel like, hey, look, okay, they won three cups. I shouldn't. I shouldn't complain. Um, I could have, I just feel like there could have been one or two more. Yeah. You know, um, and I don't, I'm not saying that as I'm a a fanboy. I mean, legitimate football, smart, hockey, smart kind of a thing. Like it's just, you know, Crosby, you had Crosby and Malkin and Latang, but Crosby and Malkin, Crosby was basically number one player in the league for like 10, 15 years. How do you get just three, three championships out of that? Yeah, it should have been. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there was that one. There was that one year he was hurt, but still, yeah, there was a lot of wasted opportunities there. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, hey, it's hard to win. Uh, so to that, you know, in this league, it's a difficult thing. You give Mike Tomlin credit; he has found a way to win in this league, just not at the next level, and that's that's the thing. Um, the, the the thing that scares me the most is, I, I've heard him. I've heard Tomlin described as a high high floor low ceiling coach he could take a bad team he could take a a team that should win six games and make him win nine but he could also take a team that that should win 12 games and have him win nine so i hope that's not the case i hope i i just you just hope for things to change and that's all you can do just hope yeah (laughs) even though it's been the same damn thing yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, I'm not sure. Like, if they don't sign Cam Hayward and he goes somewhere, I love Cam. I really do. But I'm not so sure he's going to go to, like, Arizona or Miami and blow it up there. Right. I think if he's brought in as, like, a a part of a of a of maybe a very well-structured defensive line, and sure, he can flourish. I just I just don't think, you know, um, yeah. It's just like, you know, we, we lost so many guys. I remember when the Cardinals were, like, Pittsburgh West there for a little bit. Yeah. You yeah. know, like Wayne Gandy was there and like, uh, oh, my God, Mark it was like Hagen. almost every single Steeler went from the Steelers to the Cardinals. But they crazy. didn't ever do as well when they went yeah. there. Right. You know, and I mean, yet Emmett Smith was there for a while. And I think he I think he even broke the rushing record as a Cardinal. But nobody nobody remembers that. They remember oh, the shit. Dallas Cowboy. Nobody gives a damn that he broke the NFL Emmett Smith title. in a Cardinals uniform was like Franco Harris in a Seahawks, yeah, Seahawks uniform. Like, yep. Like, Same what are we doing? Joe Namath and the Rams. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nobody remembers Joe Namath and the Rams. They, because it wasn't, was Joe Namath the backup when the Steelers played the Rams? It was Vince Ferragamo. They played no. a super, no. No, but it name no, it, it wasn't it wasn't far. Like Namath may have retired just before that. Probably. And I know Ferragamo was on the same team as Namath for a while, but irregardless, that's the thing with Cam. It's like I'd love to see him retire as a Steeler, but if it gets us better ahead by bringing in somebody younger, and we can get a Brandon Ayuk, and he goes yeah. to wherever, and he's okay, I'm okay with that. Right, you know, right. it's just that you know. it's that time of the it's a, it's it's that it's the NFL. When it's your in. time, it's your time, and you got to realize that. So hopefully they can come to something. 
Yep. All right, sir. I'd like Thanks, to say that I, I'd like to say that I feel better after after having that discussion. I don't. Now I'm actually more pissed because I was, Sorry. <laughs> I, was Sorry. I was actually going to defend Pablo to be happy, be with the the forty seven percent that are happy with him, but now I'm just I'm just angry because it's just. We gotta go. Well, I gotta go check your poll after this and see if it went. Yeah, down yeah, maybe it changed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll see you. All right, take care. Thanks. Bye.